This is Ryan Elliott for Boxing Social in association with Betfred. I'm here with the Golden Girl Olympic gold medalist Lauren Price. Lauren, pro journey almost get about to get underway. How does it feel? Oh, I'm just really looking forward to it. I'm quite chilled at the minute, but um, yeah, I'm just more excited than anything, you know. It's been a long time coming. Tokyo feels like, you know, a lifetime ago, so I'm just looking forward to getting back in that ring and showcasing a little bit what I'm about. Been a while without being in the ring now. Something I was speaking to Ben Whitaker about that when you're on GB is, is 365, 24-7, fighting, training. Has it been nice to, to kind of have a bit of a time away and assess your options and then take that break ahead of the pros? Yeah, 100%. Um, when I come back from Tokyo, it was a little bit mad. Not so much from like a boxing point of view, but like just going to you know different awards, went to the GQ awards, um, you know different things like that really. But yeah, I had, had a little bit of time, you know, to think about it. And I've been in the gym, I suppose, well since January. So I've been in the gym flat out. So yeah, I'm more than ready. And yeah, I'm really looking forward to Saturday. Nothing can prepare someone for coming out of the Olympics after success and having this manager, this promoter, everyone trying to sign you. I saw you guys, uh, you, and, you and Karis at Fight Camp, for example, and talking to Sky. How do you explain what that chaos is like when you come back and everyone wants a bit? Yeah, it's a bit of a whirlwind, really. And I suppose because you're not new to the pro game, like you said, when you're a GB boxer, you're looked after. And um, yeah, it's just like it, we had, like, obviously, people DMing us on Instagram. Uh, it was crazy. It was just absolutely bonkers, you know. Different um, managers, different like promoters, and that. And yeah, we didn't really know what it was all about. They kind of sell you the dream at the start, but then you kind of, you know, you speak to different people and stuff like that. But for me, it was like a no-brainer, you know, staying at GB with with Rob McCracken. He's someone I trust as well, and he's done great things for boxing, and um, he knows the game inside out. So, so yeah, it was a no-brainer really to stay there and work with people around me that that I trust and have, you know, made me successful as I was in the amateurs all them years. So, so yeah, why not stay there and you know pursue my pro gear and follow in the same footsteps really. Rob McCracken's always spoken very highly of you, it was touched on in the press conference, he said you're one of the best talents he's worked with, the best female fighter he's worked with as well. How do you think you'll tweak your style of at all going into the pros? Um, not massively to be honest, I'm, you know, like I said I boxed at 75, I had no other option really than to box the way I did. Um, you know, because I was fighting against six foot tall girls, you know, I, I couldn't stand there and trade. But yeah, a little bit, um, just just settling down a little bit, more relaxed, I suppose. That's just the pro game, longer rounds than that, not rushing, and just working on little things like that. So so yeah, I've just been working working with him and uh, just really looking forward to, you know, just uh, going forward and taking each fight little step up so as I go like people are speaking to me about world titles and that and, and yeah of course I want to get there and when the time's right I will but for now we're just learning on the game um, even though I'm you know I've achieved everything as an amateur which I have the pro game's completely different uh, so yeah just little adaptations and little step ups each time he said he kind of taken it a fight at a time to make sure you got that experience in the pros, but activity always key when turning over. Once this box is ticked, how soon do you want to be back out again? Uh, for me, I was just speaking now to, to Ben and Adam, and uh, I want to get on the Marshalls and Shields undercard, so I think September time. But yeah, I look to get, get as many fights in now this, this year, and then yeah, be busy as well next year as well. I've got to ask you, uh, you used to play for the Wales football team, you've got a great sporting pedigree. Big week for Welsh sport. We saw Joe Cordina, crown world champion. Wales going to the World Cup. How did you enjoy watching it all? Oh, I was absolutely buzzing, you know, for Joe to win a world title. I've trained alongside him, went to the Commonwealth Games with Joe. Uh, the way he trains, you know, he's away from his family. Um, I know what that's like as well. I'm lucky I got Paris by my side, but he's away from his wife and his kids. And yeah, like I said, I was travelling back to camp on Sunday and I was listening to the football on the radio. And as soon as I remember, like, I was listening and it was like 15 minutes ago and they were the longest 15 minutes to go in my life. Um, just listening, I didn't want, you know, Ukraine. To, to score score a goal, so yeah, to win, you know, one 0 against Ukraine and qualify for a World Cup. That's well, it, Wales unqualified in 64 years is pretty special. You know, Wales is a, a small nation, but when it comes to sport, they're very proud and they get behind us. It was a red hot atmosphere when Joe Cordina landed that knockout blow in Cardiff. Absolutely lit the place up. Is that nice for you to look at and think? Just a bit down the line, I could be headlining one of these in, in Wales. Oh yeah, 100%. That's that's a dream, you know, to, to box in Wales in front of your own fans and an headline and win a world title. That'd be a dream come true. Right, Lauren, thank you very much for speaking to Boxing.